स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Now we come to the last part about Venn diagram, which is what happens when you have a gust. Okay, gust basically means what? Gust means a disturbance of the wind. So these are drafts of air. They could be vertical, they could be sideways, they could be inclined, there could be cosine shape, sine shape, tan shape, whatever, whatever. Any disturbance, aircraft is flying smoothly, and suddenly you find disturbance. So what will happen is the gust will impose some load factor called as the gust load factor, and that should not exceed or take you out. So any gust, especially in the vertical direction, will impose vertical load factors because there will be some delta L because of the gust. That delta I will give delta N Z. So let's say an aircraft is in level flight, forward velocity is V, and now. Sudden gust acts on it. For the purpose of simplification, assume it to be a sharp vertical gust. Normally, the gusts are not sharp because if you don't have air coming only in small columns straight. Sometimes it happens, but generally it is gradual. It will build up slowly over a time. But for purpose of demonstration, let's say you have a forward speed v, and now there is a vertical speed also acting on the plane. So the aircraft is going to have now effective speed will be at an angle delta alpha. So the AOA of the aircraft will change from alpha to alpha plus delta alpha. So the additional load factor that will come is delta L, which is equal to Half rho v square. So the w on the denominator is because of n z. It's l upon w. So what we have done here is we have used a zero is the lift curve slope. Okay. So the delta alpha will give you delta c l or delta l, which will be equal to the lift curve slope d c l by d alpha into the alpha. So that delta alpha will give you delta L, which is equal to delta alpha into d c l by d alpha. So that is why we have got delta n z is equal to lift curve slope a zero v equivalent into rho into gust speed, which is the vertical speed into area upon two w. So what we see is that if you are flying level n equal to one, and now you have a gust acting, not so fast. Relatively, so you will get delta n z. In other words, the delta n z in level flight will be above n equal to one. So the push will start from n equal to one because you are already in level flight. So the agencies say that it is possible. So let me show you in the V N diagram. Then it will become little bit clearer to you. We'll come back to the diagram. So now, question is: What is the gust velocity that you will assume? Because higher the gust velocity, higher delta n z, higher the chance of exceeding the limit. So the regulatory bodies say, okay, we have done some studies, and we feel that if you assume a gust of approximately 25 feet per second. Up to a height of twenty thousand feet, and higher than that, it reduces linearly to twelve point five, and above fifty thousand feet, we assume that the gust is going to be only maximum twelve point five. This is when you are at VD, the design diving speed. At cruising speed, the delta, the the delta, the gust velocity is fifty feet per second till twenty thousand feet. 
constant and less below that. So, what basically you have to do is you have to now start calculating delta n z at various values of flight. Okay. Now, this one is for a sharp gust, but gust is never sharp, right? I told you the gust will never be sharp, air will slowly start increasing and then reach some value. So, therefore, there is something called as a gust alleviation factor. So, if you look at FAR 23, their calculations or their assumptions show that the gust follows a cosine distribution. That means, when the distance is from 0 to 15 feet, okay, the velocity is actually following some kind of a curve. So, Vg is equal to Vg max by 2 1 minus cos etc. Okay. So, they, they say that do not assume sharp gust, assume that the gust is going to be linear, but these are details which we might like to skip. So, there is a gust alleviation factor k, which takes care of the fact that gusts are not very sharp, they are smooth. So, it reduces the numerical value, it reduces the numerical value of the gust that has to be calculated. So, just to make things easy for you, let us see, this is the vertical axis nz and the velocity axis. You start from 1 comma 0 because that is what is level flight and as you go from speed equal to 0 to speed equal to vc, you have to keep adding del the gust velocity. So, remember it was 50 feet per second up to 20,000 feet and less than that, half of that beyond that. So, what will happen is, if you are in level flight, if your forward speed is large and a vertical gust acts, then you are going to get larger nz up to the vc. So, at vc, so that means you are, let us say you are at this point, you are flying at the cruising speed and let us say that cruising speed is below 20,000 feet. Now, the gust that you will be acting on it is going to be 12.5. So, with forward speed 200 knots, you have 12.5 knots, you have an angle, you have delta nz, that will be higher compared to when you are at low speed. So, this line is basically from the line 1 onwards, 1 because it is level flight. So, from level flight line, so from this, from this horizontal line, this shows you the delta nz because of gust at various speeds. And when you go beyond vc up to vd, the values are half, 12.5 and 25. If I go back to the graph, you will remember the values were 50 and 25 for up to vc and it, they were 25, 12.5 beyond above vc up to vd. So, you get this kind of a line. Now, the negative gust lines are going to be little bit inside. So, these are called as the limit gust lines. That means, once again, in level flight, if a gust acts, you could be pushed anywhere in this diagram, depending on the numerical value of the gust line. So, the regulatory bodies insist that any point inside this the aircraft can take, which means this becomes the limit gust lines. So, if somebody says draw the diagram showing the limit gust lines, then this diagram tells you up to where you can be required to be. So, on that, this is our limit maneuver envelope or the typical VN diagram that we know. On this, we superimpose those lines. So, now we have something strange. So, remember that this area anyway is not feasible because of stalling. So, do not worry about it. But what we see is that this additional triangle gets added. Okay. See, 
the limit maneuver envelope was already covering this area so no problem but the limit envelope assume that the end will be only so much but now you can go here also so at this speed if you are flying at this at this speed in level flight and a gust acts you may actually go here beyond the maximum permitted by maneuver if there is no gust and if you just go by maneuver you have to be inside the purple box if you have no maneuver but only gust flying level and you are thrown up you should be inside the yellow diagram but both can happen at the same time you could be maneuvering and then there is a gust so therefore the requirement is something like this now this green line is by mistake little bit inside we ignore that assume that this green line is actually starting from here going here and coming down here why has this mistake come because there were three transparency sheets which i used to use earlier and i used to keep one transparency above the other and the third transparency there was a slight mistake so that's why it has come like this okay these are scans of three transparencies so in other words the limit combined envelope within which your aircraft has to be certified is the super set of both these envelopes so it will be starting from here you can always cut this portion and throw it off because of the v stall so this way this way then this way then this way then this way and here again you have some extra portion this way then this way sorry this way till here then here and then back inside so the super set of both these curves becomes the limit combined envelope so what is the repercussion of this the repercussion is that if you are flying let's say you are flying at this speed some number some number below below vc some number let's say this value you are cruising at that speed so where will you be if you are cruising you will be at this point because n equal to 1 v is equal to some value below vc but high value and now a gust can act and that gust can take you here that's why you should be having this yellow envelope capability now imagine you are a military aircraft or a aerobatic aircraft and now you are doing a maneuver so you are at this point let's say you are at this point so your nz is not one you are into a small dive pull out so your nz is 1.5 let us say so that means you are at this point and now while doing this maneuver a gust acts so what can happen is that delta nz which acts when you do a maneuver it may take you outside the envelope so this is the reason why many a times aerobatic displays are cancelled during bad weather there are many instances when people have air shows parish air show fanvero air show people pay lots of money and they want to see their craft flying you go there they say sorry flights the display is cancelled why is it cancelled it is cancelled because the weather conditions are gusty and they know that in these conditions if you maneuver you are likely to exceed the limit envelope there can be an accident so many people don't understand this and they say we have paid a lot of money we have planned we have come to see but obviously the passengers may like to see or the people who pay money for air show they may like to see a crash but look we don't want aircraft to crash as a you know <laughs> as a spectacle for you it i'm i'm happy to have the videos of that unfortunate instances so this is what we have to keep in mind okay so that's the end so i'll just sum up very briefly we have another few minutes remaining what is this diagram about this diagram is basically a structural limit within which the designer has to ensure that the aircraft can withstand the loads coming without any permanent deformation or damage okay 
So, whenever a flight test engineer is supposed to certify an aircraft, you are given some flight profile which will take the aircraft to the corners of the VN diagram. And it is a bit dangerous because normally planes do not go there, but you have to do it. So, I have some experience of doing this on week 27 and whenever we have some slot, I will try to uh, give a general talk in the department in which I will share my experiences. So, thanks once again to Rahul for giving me this presentation which I am using. I have of course made some changes to it, but the essence of this remains the same from the time he made it.